reflect back on Indiana result last Saturday and to look forward to another ranked opponent this Saturday against Ohio State. Damon, we'll start here. Coach Rule said this week the score of the loss being 56 to 7 was just the same as it being about 7 to 6. Do you agree with that? Well, I think I, I understand what he's saying. I think for him, uh, worth where this program is and his expectation of winning and losing, mm -hmm. the losses for him matter. Unfortunately, um, I think the optics and the severity of the stage that it was on don't mesh mm -hmm. necessarily with the words, but I get the message that I think he's trying to send. Yeah. From watching the game the first time, the second time, was it worse or not as bad as you thought so, and what was it exactly? Um, so for me, it, so it was twofold. Number one, I think the, the part that wasn't as – um, that was, I was a little dejected about is there's still kind of this thing where when it goes south, there's this tendency to kind of push and, and, and play a little bit of hero ball mm -hmm. where you get two guys in the same run fit or doing things uncharacteristically uh, fitting in the run game that you ordinarily wouldn't do or on offense trying to, to make a throw that you ordinarily wouldn't, ordinarily wouldn't try. So I think from that standpoint, I wasn't, um, I wasn't overly – excited about that because you have to kind of get out of that because that lets me know even when it's going south and you and you fall back on um your training that's there's growth there because ultimately that's going to pay off but the other thing that i did like is there's some things that i felt like nebraska had more of a hand in that was their own doing than i originally thought mm -hmm. right it, there's always the fine line between how much credit to give the opponent versus what nebraska was doing and indiana's really good uh, and one of the things that I like is they do the simple well and, and their concepts that they that are repeatable mm -hmm. for them. It's very sequential, right? An inside run threat, an outside uh, option, and a vertical threat. It, that concept is almost there on every run pass play. So it constantly puts you in conflict. But they get there multiple ways, so I like that. But if I'm Nebraska, I'm thinking to myself, gosh, you know what, why didn't I – why did I worry about the window dressing? Why, why, when they lined up here, was I not alerted to this, right? Where is my training in that? If I'm supposed to be in D-gap, I've, I've got to be in D-gap. Or why did I fit right on top of this particular player as opposed to being in my run fit? So that part I was actually encouraged by. And it's always weird how people take it. I don't, I don't know. when you, You're playing at, you played at a high level and you're playing. I don't know if you liked – when something was your fault mm -hmm. and it was controllable, so you're like, oh, I, I can fix I can, that. Yeah. Or, man, I can't believe I did that. I know better. Mm -hmm. So it just depending on what I like, that's on me. Mm -hmm. I can fix it because I almost never want anybody to be better than me. Yeah. Right? If, if somebody's better than you and you're not in control of that, that's kind of miserable. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just kind of depends on where your mindset yeah, is. Yeah, one of those don't even well, but some, know. But some people will say, well, they're better than me. I wasn't going to win anyway. Yeah. Hey, I don't know, man. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> I kind of rather be the first part yeah. where that's on me. I'll own it. Yeah. Well, like you already kind of beat me to it. We do have to give credit where credit is due. The word that we just used last week to describe Indiana's offense was efficient. I think they lived up to that and every ounce of the word. What did Indiana prove to you on Saturday from what you saw on offense? Well, I, I think. So for them, the ability to run the ball in small spaces, some of those holes as the game went on got a little bigger, mm -hmm. but their ability to stay stay with the ground, I think they carried the ball 30-some-odd times, mm -hmm. and I know they like balance, but their commitment to staying with what was working I felt like was pretty impressive because for them, Indiana was a team that had shown they liked to stay on the gas, and they did, right? They scored – late into the fourth quarter yeah. or whatever, and Rourke wasn't even playing. But th the success that they had in the run game and the patience to stay with it, I felt was a little better than I thought. They had been a little more feast or famine in the run game, one-yard gain, two-yard gain, then a seven-yard gain mm -hmm. or 16-yard gain. They were more consistent on Saturday. so I And I felt like the offensive line played better on Saturday than I had seen them play on tape previous. I know we'll we'll get over the Indiana Anna, Indiana topic here soon, but I, I want to get to Coach Rule's press conference after the game. He didn't seem like his usual self to me. I feel like after games he seems pretty rooted in mm -hmm. what he sees from a game. And I know the the clip that got a lot of play was he didn't see this coming. Do you think it was he was caught off guard just by maybe what Indiana showed them that they weren't ready for, 
or he was just so into the game that he didn't have a moment to really know what exactly it was that broke down? Um, so I didn't have as much uh, – that didn't that comment didn't really bother me because I think nobody saw it coming. Yeah. Right? If you would have said 56-7, nah. nobody mm-hmm. really said that. Yeah. So I didn't get – I. But I, I got the same vibe you did. Yeah. Well, how did you not see this coming? Yeah. You don't know your own he team. He just felt a little shaky. Like, usually after a game, I feel like he feels pretty rooted. So, so you know what? that I do like – I'm 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 in agreement there. Do you, but do you know what I think that was? And I'm not sure. This is just my opinion yeah. from kind of his – I think he – there's two things. Number mm-hmm. one, he's an empath. Yeah. So he kind of feels what you feel. Mm-hmm. And I think he – at that – moment he felt for his team emotionally so you heard him be emotional and and kind of feel what they were going through the other part was he was talking so fresh but still in disbelief Mm -hmm. right so uh, for a guy that's I like the word rooted or has that kind of conviction or comes across from a a sense of strength Mm -hmm. I think for him there was this I'm finally caught off guard something completely unexpected happened and now I have to respond in a moment right. so I think it was kind of a yeah a, a two-pronged thing yeah post-game media I always think it's such oh it's a, tough such a tough thing it's tough yeah well the resigning message seems like this week was the team has accepted they got punched in the mouth they have to take it I heard Isaac Gifford yesterday pretty fiery he was like we have no other option except to move forward I mentioned this yesterday in my report you have an Isaac Gifford who who has no filter usually tells you exactly what the team's feeling exactly what he's feeling and then you have a Marquise Buford who a little bit more calm methodical he did address the topic of keeping things within the building. When you come from a game like that and you know you have no time to waste and you have this Saturday, what are the next steps as a team in that, inside that building? Oh, boy. So I think it, th- that's like the $64,000 question where we're weighing the results. We got our teeth kicked in versus the process. This is who we're going to be. And then at some point, those two worlds collide. So I think for this staff and this team, it's okay. What is it about the process that lent itself to the outcome that we saw on last Saturday Mm -hmm. versus what part of the process is portable that can get us through Mm -hmm. what happened last Saturday? So when you'll start to put that in the calendar and see what sifts out. And that's what you're taking and building on heading into Columbus. It's the portable part of our culture is what's going to get us by. You're you're going to have some days where the outcomes aren't what you wanted. What is it that you do with those? And the balance in that is, Ave, is, okay, well, how much conviction will we have in what we're doing? Are we shaken mm-hmm. at our core yeah. in terms of what we believe? If you're not and you believe that this is the way, then this is a chance to redefine why you talk about the things that you talk about. Mm-hmm. If there are some tweaks that you find yourself, well, they're not really getting this part of it. Maybe we need to accentuate this. Or this is the part that it, that's at the end that we needs a little fine tuning. Then that's what you bring. So you have to you have to pit it against the things that you always talk about. See how it's manifesting itself. And then that's the good that you take out for Columbus. Yeah. Before we move on to Ohio State, the last part that I thought was interesting was Coach Rule, Coach Rule brought up the here we go again mentality. He didn't feel like he felt that on Saturday. But looking back at it, looking at the film about four times before looking at it with his team, he said he felt like maybe for the first time this season they had slumped into that. If we're going to have a real conversation about this, I know we can say that there's a good amount of players in this team that – have been a part of that mindset that coach rule said predates them and I want to ask you how much of that rhetoric of the here we go again mentality comes down to the fan base because the fan base has every right to their opinion and they spend a lot of dollars they are the best parts of Husker Nation sometimes they can be the tough parts of Husker Nation but when Coach Rule mentions that in the press conference the other day, he says, my team, whether they admit it or not, is constantly hearing what they are not, or Nebraska is good, but they fall short here. How much of that here-we-go mentality isn't just the coaching staff previously, but everything else that's encompassing things outside the building? So I think a couple of things can be true at once. You know, the there can be that sentiment and that mentality, and they can read about it. And He's, I, I think he's right there when he says, hey, even at this juncture of the season, we heard this. Yeah. But the part that I thought that I hang my hat on is, but that's life. 
that's part of mm-hmm. it. That's what you get yep. when you sign up to play football here in, in at Nebraska. We need that. That's you move on. Mm-hmm. What we've got to decide is, okay, when I need to be in B gap, I need to be in B gap, or what is it that I can do different that I can control? So I like the distinction mm-hmm. because that lets me know, Ave, and I, I'm glad you asked me about this because my takeaway from that is. You can know and acknowledge something, but it doesn't have it doesn't have to be your story. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be your verse to read. I always tell people they can call you whatever they want. It's what you answer to. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that they're not calling you that, but it's what you answer to. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's the receiver of what's being said that gives whatever's being said power. Mm-hmm. And so you, they have to understand that. Yeah. Right? Because what I don't want is the alternative. I don't want fans to not care. I don't totally. Wa- I don't want uh, – this is how what I would tell him. For this, sure. this, this is what I would tell mm-hmm. the play. Because they're going to have – there's going to be a ton of hot takes. You know, we in the media are going to say some dumb things. I'm going to say some dumb things as part of the <laughs> media. Like, you can't you – can't, hey, I – you can't control me. You got to go do you. Mm-hmm. If, But it's going to be said. Yeah. And I think that's the real lesson. Because once you acknowledge that it is what it is, you get all the power again because it's up to you what you do with mm-hmm. it. That's why I like the the part that he said after that. Hey, it's part of life. This, yeah. this is going to happen. People mm-hmm. are going to say these things. What can you can control? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, like, I'm like, yeah, right? Two things can be true at once. People yeah. are going to say it. There's going to be some knee-jerk reaction. Loss is still hurt. You, you you want it to still hurt, but that doesn't mean you have to. That doesn't have to be mm-hmm. your. That doesn't have to be your chapter to read. Yeah, I think it's just interesting when you put it under a microscope and you realize who, who's receiving these things. 17, 18 to twenty-three yeah, yeah, year olds, yeah. right? So, I mean, that's, that's the tough part. And I get it. And the because. You can tell them that, but it's like, do they get, do they get that? Do yeah. they have the maturity and understanding? So, so I, I think to, it's to I think that. it's weird, right? When when you bring that up, because what people that are saying those things will say is, well, don't get on social media, don't read it, I know. don't listen. I know they never say, man, I shouldn't say it, <laughs> right? Isn't that's like the mm-hmm. bizarre world? Yeah. You you never hear the well, I as much as I don't want them to see it on social media or Facebook or whatever. <laughs> But I'll say my part. But I, but I'm still gonna yeah. say what I say, yeah. right? Like yeah. the, there's never right. the self. Yep. Mm, should I probably be saying this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's always what the other person should yeah. do. So I, I find that that cycle. You, ever, yeah. you wash clothes, right? It's like there's the wash, the rinse, but in the meantime, there's that agitated cycle <laughs> where it just kind of spins. <laughs> The, they're on the agitated cycle. Yeah. I was just interesting. I just I just was curious to hear when he brings up the here we go again. I just thought that was interesting to figure out what part of that he yeah. thinks is influential. But as this team gets ready for Ohio State, anything stick out from what the coaches or players said this week? Um, for this is weird, <laughs> but I'm going with Coach Satterfield to the good when he said. We got to figure out when we run the ball, and I'm committing to run the ball. If this is what we want to do, what personnel and how 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 can we better go about doing it from formation and personnel standpoint? I thought that was a nice little nugget, and not just because I talk about it a lot, but because that lets me know that some learning has occurred. Because you don't really know. No real learning occurs until you know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think for him, the things that we think that should be obvious, you know, maybe they weren't. You you have this this great big new shiny toy. And, yeah. you know, the way that he plays and the way that we function with this toy can allow us to do some things in the run game. Well, you know, the, 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 the new toy, people are catching on to – the, the the shelf life of this new toy and so now we need to kind of play with some other things in the meantime yeah right Let, let's add to the longevity here and so i think when he talked about different ways to get to the same parts of the run game and personnel within the run game i'm like yeah mm-hmm. I, I hear you like yeah. let's see what we can come up with if i like power counter and duo how else can i get there based on what i've been doing are there any other wrinkles I can add and still stay in those same core run concepts? I liked it. I don't want to get you worked up, but do you make anything else of the Satterfield comments before we move on? I'm not too worked up. I, I don't. I thought it was two prong. It 
I didn't love hearing it, especially as it became kind of a national joke about the yards per play and things like that. But two things I think happened. Number one, I don't think he quite understood the question. Do I think he should know their yards per play? Sure. Mm -hmm. Do I think he should know it compared to the national average? No. It's not it's not realistic. I think coordinators operate in a vacuum, and they worry about what's good for them. I think if you ask Chip Kelly what the national average is on yards per play, he wouldn't know, but he would be able to tell you what, his, te what his team is and where he wants that to be. Yeah. So – I wasn't as up in arm about some things as others, but I get how the optics were poor. Yeah. Well, we heard from Coach Rule last year. They will never waste a crisis, and they have that opportunity come oh, this Saturday. What does Ohio State do really well? Yeah, so they're they're still balanced on offense. Um, they've got a two-headed monster at, at running back. They have good quarterback run game, and he can throw the ball. And they have three or four weapons on the outside. So – um, their ability to kind of mesh being versatile is at a high, high level. They are explosive offensive bunch. And, and so when I look at trying to take away something, you can't get it all, right? That th Their offense is like kind of trying to bottle smoke. Some of it's just going to get away. You can't get it all. If you want to get the, the bulk of it, try to establish stop in the run game because everything they do is predicated off how well they run the football yeah well it's interesting so you, you bring that up I, I'm curious so schematically it seems like coach white said there's a lot of things he would do different and that that's something that they can't go back and redo against Indiana and schematics of whatever Ohio State's going to show them or throw at them this week and is going to be there what are the immediate rebounds that Nebraska can fix from Indiana to Ohio State that say hey we have addressed it it's not happening again. This is going back to our basics that we will do this Saturday. I think it's playing free and playing fast. I don't care what side of the ball, offense, defense, or special teams. It didn't seem like a team that um, the body language is kind of vibing. And I got the impression early on after the, you know, feeling the ball at the one and a half yard line and that it was like, ooh, are we as dialed as we should be, right? And then you got the – the first run play from the shadows of your own end zone, and you threw it seven times in a row since po after that. And yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, they're disjointed, right? And the guy started to kind of press a little bit, and he didn't make some plays on some 50-50 balls on defense. And I didn't love the – you know, I'm a huge body language guy, and I felt like, yeah. So if there's one thing that I think they can fix right away is, is the energy level, mm -hmm. right? You should be – pretty bothered by the outcome and the process you that you went through to get to that outcome mm -hmm. on Saturday last Saturday so I think if there's one thing I want to correct immediately it's my attention to detail and my energy level that I think I don't know how far it'll take them mm -hmm. but I know that's the first thing that I would try to correct if I'm this football team because I still want it to be about my own benchmarks yeah your measuring stick is in Ohio State. Your measuring stick is, are you being the best versions of yourself? And until that answer is a yes, mm -hmm. it's not going to be about the opponent. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I heard Coach White say this last week before Indiana, and I feel like this applies to both sides of the ball. But Coach said, we are going to give up a big play. Mm -hmm. That is okay. That is football. It's the way that we then respond after that, I feel like that's similar on Nebraska's offense as well. We might miss a big play, but that doesn't mean we can't respond and make the next one a good play. I feel like oh, they know that Ohio State's going to throw a, a very efficient offense at them again. They have to know we are going to give up a big play here. How do we respond differently than what we did with Indiana and say, okay, let's just let them have this drive. We'll come back and respond the next drive versus let's respond this next play. How so, important is that for this weekend? It's huge because that's that's – that's a big part of the process that they talk about all the time that they need to take with them. Stay in the moment. They're, they have this. They have a breakdown. It's pretty cool. It's the – I can't remember the exact – I think it's the 60 seconds of a play. Mm. And it looks like a clock, and it's receive the information, break the huddle, the execution of the play, uh, understand the result, mastery of the result, reset, run the play again. Right? It's like – it's something like that. It's – it's pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's only a 60-second increment, which is just one minute. But when you think about if there's – if each play lasts four to five seconds and you run 170 plays between the two teams, I mean, if I'm playing defense, I may be only playing hard six minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
it's in, if, yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm, pl- I'm it. playing hard for six minutes. Can I maximize in that six minutes? And within that six minutes, how's my 60 seconds? Mm-hmm. So that's the part of the process I think presents the unique challenge because not worrying about if it's first and 10, I'm not worrying about first and 10 relative to, man, can I make sure we, we stay out of a third and don't put them in a third and short? Or if I'm on offense and it's first down and it doesn't go the way that I want, and I think, oh, man, how's this going to affect my third down in two plays? If you just stay right there with first down or that initial kick or fielding that ball, ooh, I need a big return so I can set our offense up after I return it. It's, hey, am I the best version of myself when I'm returning this kick? The more you can get stay right there, I'm telling you, it'll mm-hmm. yield the results. That's the part of the process I think they need to grow in. Yeah, well, everyone knows how big of an opportunity this is come Saturday. What are the three most important things for Nebraska? So I think one is your emotional psyche. Where are you? Uh, are, are we are we licking our wounds? Are we coming out fighting? But it's it's what happens with a wounded animal. Number two is I think you you can't watch the scoreboard. It is what it is. I don't care if it's to the good or to the bad. We didn't like the way Nebraska played with a lead, and we certainly didn't like the way that they played from behind. So guess what, guys? If you can't win for losing, matter. doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't don't matter. matter. Don't watch the scoreboard. Stay here. And then the third thing, and this is if you want to pull these kinds of upsets on the road, can't give the football away. And I know it sounds easy, and, and it's been three out of the last seven times you and I have talked. Take care of the football. Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it. We'll see how Nebraska responds this weekend at a top five opponent in Ohio State on the road.